Right, we're back. Right, I don't know what happened there. Apparently, I've um, I I copyrighted something, so that's confusing, isn't it? So I've deleted the um picture because it's the only thing I can think of it being, which would be very strange. Um, I don't know what that's about. So apologies for that. Um, and I'm getting all these emails through. No one's watching at the moment. Um, which is a shame, but hopefully you'll come flooding back. Um, yeah, we get the three. There we go. Um. Yeah, very strange. Something got copyrighted. Don't know what did. Obviously, it's, it's my um excellent skills. Um, I don't know what I violated. I violated copyright. Apparently, I find it hilarious when I do that. Um, oh, what's what's going on now? Stream health. Oh, that's good. We're good. We're good. Um, I d I don't know what what. <laughs> I honestly don't know what. What um what I did. So tell everyone who was watching to come back and watch it. Um, I'll put the new link on the Clash Charts. Obviously you found it. I'm really confused how that happened. Um, Yeah, oh, we're coming back. We're coming back. We're good. We're good. Again, if we disappear, let me know and um, we will sort it out. Hopefully people will start coming back. I feel bad now. Like, where's everyone gone? Um, there we go. We're back to similar numbers again. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm genuinely confused. So obviously, you've obviously had enough time to answer those questions because that's obviously what you're doing when you're trying to find the stream. Um, how strange. How peculiar. I'm trying to work out what I did. I got rid of the image just in case it was that because it may have thought it was a little film. It wasn't. So maybe it was that. Um, who knows? Who knows? Um, maybe it is the emoji. I need to get rid of it. It could be that. Um, I guess I got rid of the other image. I'm scared now. Oh, that emoji. Oh, imagine. Um, anyway, let's get through these questions quick so I can get rid of the image. So, can I write a ghost story is what we're doing today. True or false? Raven is, not, is a novel written by Homer Simpson. No, that is false. Okay, it's false. That is not true. It is false. Where's the Raven set? It is set in a country house. Um... Number three, which month is the story set? It is set in December. The story is set in December. What is the narrative perspective of the Raven? First person narrative perspective. What can the man hear? He can hear tapping at the window. Um, what are the connotations of Raven or of a Raven? Okay, so Ravens associated with... Um, associated with... What are they associated with? Like graveyards and death and things like that. And there was a picture of a ghost there, but like I just described a minute ago, I got rid of it because I was scared of that was the reason that we got cut off. Right, one send the description of the ghost. The man was dead underneath his cover. Ooh, that's mine. Um, you know what it was. Um what the picture was of. So feel free to send me your sentence. Oh, right. Okay. People still didn't get the idea. Lovely. Um, I'm going to get rid of that quickly. So in case it was the emoji that kicked us off. Oh, change. Please change. There we go. Oh, I've got, I've got loads of copyrighted images in this. So who knows? Who knows? This could get, um, this could get removed again. So can I write a ghost story is what we are doing today. To be able to write a ghost story, incorporating all the techniques we have looked at this term. Okay, so obviously we've looked at a lot of terms this this term. Um, right, I've got a lovely email here. Let's have a look at this one. It's probably the one trying to skip this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, Susan Majiki wants a uh, wants a reply. <laughs> right. Okay. Um. Yeah. Thank you for that. Oh, that. oh, lovely. Um, we'll carry on. Um, yeah, so, I'll write a conventional ghost story on target. Above target, I'll write a ghost story incorporating all the techniques we've looked at this term. In today's lesson, we're going to write our own ghost story. So, we've been, like I said, we've used, think of all the techniques we've done, studied, and we're going to write our own ghost story. So, narrator, narrative, sequence, protagonist, first person, those are some of the things we can include today. Oh, hello, thanks for joining us. I haven't put your task prints on, so I'll make sure I do that in a minute. So, in your books, have a page ready to plan on. I need to get mine ready. Um, make sure I do that one. Yay. Um, I need to get mine ready. 
Okay, let's set the, the camera up a little bit. Okay, put that one on like that. I need to get a piece of paper ready for myself. Okay, which setting will you use for your ghost stories? There's a few settings. Okay, we can have... Actually, I don't want the visualizer on. I want to keep this a secret. I don't want you guys seeing my story. You'll just steal it. I know what you guys are like. Um, let's go to this one. So, I'm scared to move anything. Have this page ready. Right, which setting will you use for your ghost story? Let's have a few suggestions from the PowerPoint. So, will we use... Oh, why did I do this? Was Right, this house. Could we possibly use this house? Could we possibly use this house? Or could we possibly use that there for a location? So, select your setting. Select your setting. Let me know which ones you're choosing, because I want to choose a different one. Put it in the, put it in the chat which setting you're going to use for your ghost story. Okay, so which setting are you going to use for your ghost story? Send me emails if you wish, because I don't know which setting, setting, setting I'm going to use. Yes, you can write a ghost story about a whale if you wish. I don't know why we're so obsessed with those whale noises. Um, make sure you like and subscribe and all that stuff. Um, right, I'm gonna. I know which one I'm gonna do. Right, let's write one about that. Okay, so hopefully you chose one. You chose the setting for your ghost story. So what I like to do with your setting is write. One sentence about your setting. One sentence about your setting. Think about um, using as many adjectives as you could, as you can. Not about what's going on, literally just the setting. So can you do that now, please? Um, oh, I've got mine. Okay, so just write one sentence to describe the setting. One sentence to describe. That made me jump. Well done, whoever just subscribed, because that means you've got your name on the screen. I haven't got time to go back and change the screen and see who that was, but well done. Thumbs up. Um, so, there's the setting. Next, characters. Here we go. Which characters are we going to have? Are we going to have this, this old cheeky chap? You know, is he going to be a character in your story? Give him a name. Give him a name. He could be important. Are we going to have this creepy little girl Ooh, who's up lit? Are we going to have a ghost, a friendly ghost? Or maybe we're going to go a bit more, you know, conventional. Maybe we'll have a gardener who is gardening and tending to the garden. People better be doing this because I'm going to read them out. Um, are we going to have a conventional couple, possibly? Or are we going to have another couple that we don't often get? writing about. So which characters are we going to include in the story? Write a little short description. So which characters? Give them names. Give them names. Who are we going to have as our characters in the story? Hmm. I'm trying to think who the characters are going to be. Whales. There's quite a lot of whales in there. We're on a delay as well, so I know in a minute what the chat's going to be full up of. Mm, just whale, just one whale. Yeah. Characters of the story. I shouldn't really chew the end of my pen in this corona. Ah, oh, there he goes, my money. Um, in this crisis that we're going through at the moment. Um, so, characters. I don't know who's char which character? Who do I write about? Who shall I write about? Hmm. 
Hmm. I like the bloke in the corner. He's going to be named John. Have John. <laughs> John. I was going to say, do you want to have John, that cheeky chappy? We're going to have. Um, oh, I can have that creepy girl. Creepy girl. What's she like? Maria. Oh, Maria. And then. Um, <laughs> and then we need. To have a sentence description about their appearance, okay? Sentence description about <laughs> about <laughs> his partner's the ginger one. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, one of them is. Um, so one of the, one sentence description about each of the characters, okay? Oh, I love this. It sounds like someone else wrote it. That's how good that is. Um, right, and one sentence description of the other character. Right, lovely. Oh, who's my other character? Hmm. Oh, I've got the other character. Needs one sentence description. Perfect. Right, you can have as many characters as you want. Okay, you can have it conventional, you can have it unconventional. You could have it normal, heteronormative, or homonormative. Nice, I'm going <laughs> to... I was supposed to read that out loud. I'm going to do the old guy and call him Frank, and he's actually the ghost of the school. Lovely. <laughs> Not Frank Lampard, no. Right, okay, so choose a character. So you've chosen your setting, you've chosen your character. Um This is great. This is great. Um Perfect. So so we've had settings, we've had characters, and now we're going to write a na think about your narrative hook. So we've done narrative hooks before. Hopefully, it won't confuse you too much. Um, so here's some narrative hooks we can consider. The puzzling hook. This immediately makes you question. This immediately makes you question. I'm sorry, this doesn't make you immediately. This immediately makes you ask questions about. This immediately, make, uh, this immediately makes you ask questions of the story. This helps my read what it says. Um, yeah, I mean, I like doing that. I like making you ask questions and think, hmm, which one is it? The address, direct address hook. Okay, you are spoken to directly and involved in the actions from the start. So, I was waiting for you to arrive. What? Hmm, that's strange. The subtle hook. This appeals to your sense of curiosity. Who is she? She waved at the man across the road. Something like that. The atmospheric hook. This is, this is descriptive and could evoke of any variety of moods. The cold wind blew through the door. Lovely. The visual hook appeals to our sense of sight. The comet dashed through the sky towards the mansion. Lovely. Um, the funny hook. This is a tricky hook and only works if it appeals to your sense of humour. Oh, um, you think, I don't know why I didn't think about this one before. Not, not, no, let's just not bother with that. The direct speech hook. This implies lots of action and a fast pace. 
What are you doing here? It'd be direct speech hook. Okay. Be a good one. So select which hook you're going to use to start off your story. Um, narrative hook. Which narrative hook are we going to use? Hmm. I'm going to do the subtle hook, I think. So choose your narrative hook. And then write your narrative hook once you've done, once you've chosen, write your narrative hook. Got it. So once you've got it, write down. Um, the, has anyone seen the gold? No, I haven't. Um, why, why are we singing? I, w I really want to sing it out loud, but that would get me taken off. So um, write your, your hook. Choose your hook. Write it down. Lovely. Narrative structure. So we've looked at this before. It's time to get your narrative structure in order. So fictional narratives may follow an overall structure which may fit broadly into typical stages. Exposition. The setting of the scene for the reader. This could be a descriptive of the setting or the backstory of the character. Crisis point or climax. An exciting or tense part of the text. Resolution, the conclusion of the narrative where conflicts are resolved or meaning is revealed. Okay, so we need to write, we need to plan this out. I'm just going to carry, I think it's just me writing a story for you guys, then, oh well. So, let's, right, let's, let's, um. I keep getting distracted by your chat. So let's decide our narrative structure, what's going to happen in our story. So, at the. Ooh, I think I've got mine. I guess that's that one. Um. Lovely. And then we need the middle bit. The climax. What's my climax going to be? Got it. Right, I'm going to give you a bit more time to sort that one out. Okay. So, should I have your setting? Should I have your characters? Should I have your narrative hook? Should have... Oh, I know what I was going to do. I never got around to doing it. Oh, well, I'll have to do it a different way. Um, should have your narrative structure. And hopefully... That was... Got loads of things you can include. Repetition. Characterization, events, mood, atmosphere, narrative voice, pathetic fallacy, rhetorical questions, punctuation for effect, dialogue, juxtaposition. All things that we've looked at this term. Okay, think about the setting, character, narrative hook, the things we've looked at. And there's your structure, exposition, 
climax resolution. So I'm going to give you a bit more time now to write that in your books. And let's start writing our stories. And you may want to hear some stories. So luckily, two people have sent me their stories already that they've done for their homework. So I'm going to read theirs to start off with, hopefully to inspire you. This is the first one I received. You know who you are. You'll recognise it. Grammar. Maybe I should. Um, oh, I know what I'm going to do. Right. Bear with me. Start writing your stories. Be back in 30 seconds. Start writing your stories. Oh, come on. Just work, please. Please work. Let's make sure I'm still live. Yeah. Let's make sure we're still going. We're still going. We're still good. We good. I mean, this may crash the computer, but hey. Hey, who knows? This could get us sent off, though. Is this a good idea? Here we go. Ooh. Don't want it to play too loud. So, I'm going to read some stories out to you. Ooh. Everyone ready? This is the first story I received. Grandma has been sick for seven months now. Every Sunday afternoon, I would go to her place and help her out. I would make her a cup of tea, would make her favourite soup, plain noodles in a chicken broth sweet corn and pepper pieces. The soup was the highlight of the day. After seeing me, being old and sick, the listless things would make you happy. I also do a shopping for her and do chores all around the house. The fact you guys are still just chatting away. Ah, oh, please don't freeze me. Grandma lived in a very old fashioned lived a very old-fashioned life. She'd often, in her fifties, take her dogs for extra long walks. She was very adventurous. Oh, what is that called? She was very adventurous, but also very clean. She wouldn't do anything to do with food without wadding. Wadding? What am I all about? Not wadding. Wading. Her hands. When she came back from her day out, be it she went to then bank on bingo, she would always come back and wash her hands. All this became clear one Sunday afternoon. I was in the kitchen making a chicken broth soup and her tea. Two spoons of honey and almond milk. When I noticed that the carpets were covered in speckles of lint, dirt and dust, I brought her lunch into her on her tray with a bean bag bottom to her in the living room where she sat on her green armchair that came all the way to her head and caved around her. She grinned at me and I asked if I should hoover her carpets. She grinned once more and said, yes, thank you, chill. I went to the kitchen and through the parlour to a door on the left-hand corner. As I opened it, I knocked off a tin of old chickpeas. Yeah, I know, copyright, we're fine, we're fine, we're cool, we're cool. Old chickpeas that had been there since 1947. I opened a small door and felt around the side of the wall for an old switch that looked like a piece out of snakes and ladders. Then I found it. I waved my hand around to get rid of the spider webs and old pieces of cloth that was hang up to dry ones, that were hang up to dry ones. The hoover... Oh, it nearly closed, and that would be bad, wouldn't it? The Hoover was covered by the old bed sheets. She had the Hoover that was all over the magazines at the time. The name is faded and scratched, but she would make any excuse to Hoover when her bingo friend. Right, come on, you should be still writing your stories. Um, after finishes. 
Well, I done. Where's it gone? As I struggled to hoover to get past the boxes, I noticed knocker handle on some different coloured wood. I left it and I went to the hoover the carpets. After I'd finished the living room, I asked my grandma what the door was for. She took a gulp <coughs> and her broth water, of her broth water, and she replied, Nothing to you for you to worry about. Just look, don't look in there. She carried in with her soup, Newton snoodle, so her noodle soup, and then asked me if I could take it back out and pass her the telly box remote. The telly box remote. I placed the tray on the counter and looked at the hoover behind me. Once I put the hoover back, I kept an eye on the handle and a different coloured wood. Me being the curious 15 year old, I opened the weird door. Pitch black. I couldn't see anything. Nothing. I pulled my head out the door and peered into the box of long white candlesticks and scraped the math on the box. Math, the match probably, on the box to light the candle. To my surprise, there were stairs going down. As I was about to put my foot on the first step, I heard tiny footsteps. I bent down and saw a rat. There's actually banging in real life. It scared me for a minute. He went up on his hind legs and looked at me. He tilted his head and he looked at me as if I was going to witness something terrible. And I was. I felt my way to try and find the banister. The banister was made of three pieces of wood. And trusted the candle to help guide me. When I reached the bottom, I realised that there was a light switch dangling my string, so I pulled it. The lights flickered like there were people unscrewing and screwing the bulbs constantly. I was too busy looking up at the lights. I stepped forward and I felt something soft and squishy. Moths and blue bottle flies flew into the light and I looked down. I looked down onto the soft and squishy surface and I realised that I was no longer standing on the creaking floorboards. I was standing on the chest of a man. A man who likes who looks like he's around his 40s, and he had burn marks on his face. He had wounds on his neck and a bingo card in his hand. But I also saw that on his chest pocket, he had a soap bar, a soap bar like you would see in hotels. I looked up only to see already 30 bodies, each with bingo cards and soaps. So he didn't go to the bingo to win the jackpot. She went to the bingo to murder innocent people. They all had their own scars and marks. Some of them had created a home for maggots and worms. They all had dates stamped on their overalls in which she had dressed them in. One of them was 190306. That was last week. She was taking advantage of the nurses to help clean her thoroughly. But these dates went all the way back to the 10th of 1997. I didn't know what to do. I was standing in a deck of bodies. Are we all here still? Was standing in a deck of bodies. Make sure you email it to me. I think it's easier for email the whole story to put in the chat. The stench was horrible and it was hot, very hot, as if someone had just turned on a heater. But it wasn't this hot beforehand. I heard a noise and it sounded like it was coming from the kitchen upstairs. I turned around and at the top of the stairs there was there she was standing. She's staring at me, just staring. Didn't say a word. It's scary that. Isn't it? I've lost my place. Oh, I got too scared. Just staring, staring, didn't say a word. Where am I? I've lost it. Oh, I've ruined the story. You've ruined it. Oh, the music's made me scared as well. I'm staring, staring. Oh, she's just staring. She said, don't say a word. She put on her gloves and walked down the steps. One by one. She didn't look like she was 80 years old and have a brain tumour. She looked like a crazy serial killer stalking her prey. I stepped back and fell on top of a body. My hand fell in its mouth and bugs were crawling up my arm. I was too traumatized that I didn't give I was too traumatized that I didn't give notice. Didn't give notice to them. Her rubber gloves were making a horrible noise against the wood and it got louder and she came closer and closer. I used a poor man's leg to get up and I found a window latch that I pulled myself up and closed it behind me. I used an old gutter piece and a wood plank. Let's make sure we're still there. I always get scared when I get emails. And a wood plank to keep it shut. I looked through the dirty window and she was staring there, looking at me. She looked terrifying. She spun around, so I thought that was it. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. When I reopened them, she was banging on the window, screaming at me with those devilish eyes and her gold tooth. She turned around and stared to make, started to make it back to the top of the stairs. I quickly ran along the stone driveway 
and went to the shed. There, I picked up my bike and cycled back home. I couldn't find the courage to tell my dad what I saw. I didn't have expect him to believe me, even if I did tell him. Two days went by, and I was still seeing his poor elderly bingo gamblers. Burnt, squashed, and slashed. I was sat at the kitchen table, and on it was a newspaper which headline read, Two elderly bingo players mysteriously missing. I knew exactly how they became missing. My dad was about to switch the channels from the news to the lottery numbers as I grabbed the remote out of his hand and pulled my chair forward. Behind the news reporter, I saw a familiar figure. Broad shoulders, slanted head, relatively short. There she was. But suddenly the camera angled away and then when it went back into place, she was gone. I repeatedly buzzed back at the TV just to be sure, and it was her. I recognised the dragonfly pin on the jacket that just caught and reflected the light of the cameraman's white sheets. Two weeks went by and the postman went missing. A month went by and three postmen went missing. She has found her new target. That's really good. Thank you to the person who sent that in. You know who you are. Well done. Um, really nice story. I'm still here, aren't I? Um, yes, if you finished them, send them to me. We've got 20, 35 minutes. I was hoping to plan mine, but I'll, I'll make it up on the spot if needs be. Um, so it's a really good story. Well done. The next story I received was this one. And I've, I know I'm getting them through as we speak. Um, what? Oh, okay. Um, today I'm going to visit my newly inherited house. My aunt Sally died of this mysterious illness. I have never met her, but apparently I'm her only living relative. It made me wonder why she left it to me. It arrived there excited to get inside. I took one look at the outside and I almost changed my mind. It was scary. It looked massive standing alone in the middle of nowhere. Creepy trees lined the driveway. They were bent over scarily, intertwined together, almost challenging me to edge past them up the drive. I fumbled for the door key in my pocket, wanting to get it ready for a quick entrance. The key slipped through my trembling fingers and I clanged to the ground, breaking the eerie silence. I bent down to pick it up for some reason, still watching the trees out of the corner of my eye. Really good story there, well done. That was a nice story. Still there, still going. Okay, we're still singing songs. Next story, let's open up. I've got loads through now. Um, oh, we're doing memes. We are doing memes. Right, let's open that one. I assume they're both the same, because you sent me two. Scary music, isn't it? Yeah, they're the same. I got excited about the ghost story, and all I saw was the meme. We're starting the meme sending. Nice, I like memes. Is this um? Okay, I'll read this one while my other one loads a minute. You haven't just sent me the whole right. According to all known laws of aviation, <laughs> there is no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get... Uh, why can't I just use the arrow anyway? Okay, its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies away anyway. Flies anyway because bees don't care what humans think is possible. Yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black. Ooh, black and yellow. Let's shake it up a little. Barry, breakfast is ready. Coming! Hang on a second. Hello, Barry? Adam, can you believe this is happening? I can't. I'll pick you up. Looking sharp. Use the stairs. Your father paid good money for those. Sorry. I'm excited. Here's the graduate. We're very proud of you, son. The perfect report card. All bees. Very proud. Ma, I got a thing going here. You got lint on your fuzz. Ow, that's me. Wave to us. We'll be in row 118,000. Bye. Barry, I told you. Stop flying in the house. Hey, Adam. Hey, Barry. Is that fuzz jail? A little. Special day. Graduation. Never thought I'd make it. Three days... Three days college. I'm glad I took a day and hitchhike around the hive. You did come back different. Hi, Barry. Arty growing a moustache. Looks good. Hear about Frankie? Yeah. You going to the funeral? No, I'm not going. Everybody knows. Sting someone, you die. Is this literally just the whole... This is literally the whole... The, yeah, this is literally the whole of the B movie, isn't it? Right, okay, I'm, I've gave up with that. I, I was waiting for the ghosty bit. Anyway, the one I just opened. Oh, 
just waiting for the chat to come through. It's the <laughs> oh, it's actually... <laughs> it is actually the beam movie. Right, anyway. Lovely. Let's read the next one. I love it when they come through like this. Devil child. I can't remember how I got here. What I have done. Who I am. A treacherous beginning. A tortured tale. A tortured tale, even. My mind poisoned by dark thoughts. However, I never thought poison could spill so far over an apothecary. Oh, I can see you're typing. Well, that's weird. Ooh, we're both on it. I could type things in this as well. Anyway, um, apothecary table down a hall and into a family. All stained red and bloody cliche I'd never imagined to be a destiny. I struggle to remember the light. The dark fields lined with tulips and daisies scattered aimlessly. Like freedom, I forget sunshine. I only see darkness. For you, I am trapped in this inky blackness. Stuck in a box of secrecy. The poison seeped through my mannered barrier into my troubled mind. And now I have done something terrible. But I know my actions were necessary. For I'd seen great danger I'd faced over many moons. Moons? Moons. And I had to destroy the evil I'd created. I looked across the table. His eyes seemed dull now, not reflecting hope as it once did in that summer field. His beauty shaped by deprivation. Deprivation of sleep and love, is it? Oh, right. I'm loudly right. We're, we're flooding in with these suggestions now. Deprivation! I've lost my place. Have I lost my place? I can't. Devotion is sleep and love. There we go. We were not the same as we were before. As much as our youth faded, so did our devotion. I knew my skin no longer blushed. Rose, my hair no longer shone with glittering strands like a pond in spring reflecting the sunlight's glowing optimism. For my 23rd year, it has commenced that I'm no longer the beautiful lily of the garden. I am the simple woman. And mother sat in it. He works daily providing for our life. A surgeon never sleeps. He tells me in a faint laugh and echoes quietly throughout a house that is numb with boredom and depressed monologues of a tiresome day. I feel forced conversation, conversation choke and throttle my throat and lacerate me with pressured chat. It could be, not be exerted through my chaotic notions that strangle my mind. Oh, how that, uh, hockey, oh, how that occupation hazards your time. A whimsical response lays with false interest about a day of no concern to me. I close my eyes to remember. I tried doing that then. You guys can't read my eyes. The vague images of the grass tickling my shoulders, my soft velveteen dress caressing my hands. I can still feel the fabric slip through my fingers, our laughter ring through my ears. Emily! Emily, my dear. Just start the music again. Just make sure we're still, we're still here. Emily! Emily, my dear. My musing memory is disrupted by an unsettled companion. His fear painted onto his face like a mournful portrait that hung up across the wall to cover a hole created by an angered by an angered action's outburst. Sorry, mistress. Are you not finished with your tea? Oh, yes. I notion, startled by alien presence. Thank you. You're splendid. I shall alert the chef of your pleasure dining. We retrieve. We retire, not retrieve. We retire to the living room where we stare into vacant space. William reads solemnly, engrossed in the a general of the plague year. Ah, oh, that's good. A sorrowful no novel, but one of sentiment. His mother died, as did his sister. He was so far away traveling to exotic places that he would take me to. I miss those adventurous days. He closes the book and looks at me with hopeful and a propitious glint in his eye, which already troubles me. Show visit the nursery. My stomach drops. I feel the pit in my stomach swallow me whole. The ground begins to sink and my heartbeat quickens. Breath loses pace and my mouth becomes dry. This illness, not even a doctor as great as William could cure. Fear, a sickness worse than the plague. My fear was not unsound, for I had seen the devil in a natural form of disguise. But no one could be attentive to my anxieties and terrors the child brought. For they'd think of me ill, think of me as mad, but I knew the truth. William, I'm going to, I am to go to bed. I feel rather tired. Well, okay, for tomorrow you can visit. Tonight, I shall allow you for Ethel to visit. No! I scream in a flurry of panic. Ethel must be asleep for now. We are to visit town in the early morning to pick out silks for her dress, remember? And Edward and Henry are probably retired to the evening also. Well, then I shall visit our daughter. 
I cannot understand for a man to be so interested in this child. Why couldn't he let the nanny be exposed to the devil's shadow? However, there is nothing I can persuade to him to stay, so I simply nod as he walks away. His suit's tails slowly follow him and disappear into the misery of the dark hall. Everyone's still here. Yeah. I sit for a while. My brown ringlets hug my shoulders, my eyes glassy and vacant. I hear the hushed tone of the grandfather clock tick repeatedly to alert myself that the sands of time moved as rapidly as my thoughts. It was a noon... I had recently returned from town and I knew the task waiting for me. I had to destroy the devil who killed my baby. Lillian must die, as did Charles. It was early April, back when birds would sing a symphony of orchestral elegance in the garden, and I heard faint apologies blended with grief-filled tears. I am so sorry, Mistress Tart. Charles has died. He was asleep in his cot and... The rest of this blurred memory was forgotten, but I do, not, do know Lillian was then born in the December. The devil had cursed Charles and took his place. I knew this for certain. It was nine o'clock, and while William entertained the help that the gracious, about their gracious service, I entered the nursery and the devil's cry burst my ears. I knew what I had to do. William. Lillian is gone. I faked tears, sadness, and grief for 30 days until I realised something had changed. I could see here the baby. I could still hear, sorry, the baby's cry. I could see him every time I closed my eyes. I had tried to ignore it, but it was impossible. And then I realised the devil's presence was still clear. Children, William had, William had any of you seen Willie Lillian before she passed, sadly passed? Yes, Mama. We had all visited her after dinner. Edward replied solemnly. And that's when the pennies in the devil's clutch fell. The devil's poisonous ideas spilled into my fam family's vulnerable ears. They all had to die. I grabbed a vial from William Williams, Williams? Williams' cabinet of concoctions that were known for their dangerous side effects at, at high dosages. I slipped some into each glass and proposed a toast. For our loss and for our love, for one another, now everyone drinks up. This is really good. I'm loving it. I'm all right in it. They all showed faint, appreciative looks as they drank. Suddenly, everyone's looks changed. They began to choke, splutter, sc cry and scream. The maids had been left in the kitchen where the smoke's subtle aroma lingered. The fire had locked them in, so no anyone who had been near the child would suffer similar fate as the family. Soon, it was her at the dinner table looking cross at them. I had done something terrible. But it was necessary evil cannot live. Charles did not live. I grabbed my glass and consumed it in seconds. Everything was quiet, and all that could be heard was a baby crying. <coughs> oh, please, Harriet. You will give yourself nightmares, Lord Andrew exclaimed. What a delightfully terrifying story, Harriet. Where did you come with something so inspired? Victoria mused, praising her friends for entertaining and frightening her company. When did, when did you concoct this story? Probably right on the carriage to Oxford from London. A rather long trip, Anthony added. Shame, dear, you could not write so. Well, dear, it's a good thing you did not marry me for my literary achievement. <laughs> Victoria laughs. So, dear, what actually inspired the story? And you question. Who said? This story was fictional. Harriet exclaimed. The sound of a baby crying became overwhelming. <laughs> and filled the house like fire. Harriet never had children. Ooh, like it. Love it, in fact. Really good story. Are we still here? Are we still alive? Can you imagine if I, I just finished a story and no one's there? Okay, so hopefully you're still writing your stories. This is great. Right, oh, I've got loads through. The email inbox is full of them. Full of them. Right. Here we go. I've got, t I've got 10 to get through. Oh, I really hope so. Can you imagine? I don't want to go over time, though. Let's open this one. There we go. Next story. 22 minutes to get through the stories. Knock, knock. As John walked into the house, he was greeted by the looming terror within as he was swallowed by the darkness. John was a simple man. Said not the type of guy to stay a night in a house that hadn't hasn't had anyone living there since 1854, after the owner at the time died. He loved anything simple and easy. 
He ate the same cereal for breakfast since he was a kid, purely ham sandwiches for lunch, and even though he was more adventurous with his dinner, it never made it too much further than a Sunday roast for his family. However, John is a fair man. I need to turn that music down, it's getting too loud. Isn't it? John is a fair man. There we go, I'll go back to this one. Then. John is a fair man, and when he lost that bet a week ago, to stay in that dreaded house, there was no chance he would not spend the night there. Still going. Hopefully you're still writing your stories, not just here listening to me read them out. Um, yeah, right there. As John walked through the maze of the house, each floorboard creaked under his feet. John wanted to find out where everything is and all the escape routes, just in case he was not on his own. John didn't have a fear of being alone in a dark place, but he had a fear of not being alone in a dark place. So as he was walking around creek by creek, he lit any candles he could find until he found the bedroom. In the bedroom, he placed lights so every inch of the bedroom and space around it was fully lit. He then unpacked his stuff and prepared for the rough night ahead. Knock, knock, knock. 1.53 a.m., it said on John's watch. Probably the police, he thought, as his lights were bright and most likely visible outside. However, as he opened the door of the bedroom, he noticed that all the lights and candles were switched off. Confused, he turned his lights on and went to see who was at the door. As he turned the handle and pulled the door open, nothing happened. It was locked. John's heart sank further than the deepest part of the ocean as he collapsed in fear. That's when he heard another knock. This time, however, it came from the bedroom. Anxious to go up, he grabbed a metal rod to protect himself. He creeped up the stairs as quietly as possible, but that was hard with the floor was screaming under his feet. He tiptoed into his room to find that his window was barred. Freaked out, he turned around to get to out of the bedroom as the door slammed shut and locked itself shut. 15 minutes inside the locked rooms, John could have sworn he was going crazy. He started hearing voices, the voice of a little girl. John was too scared to say anything. He felt his voice leave his throat as fear. Pure fear entered him and controlled his entire body. John started getting tired and frustrated, so he tried the door again. That's when he heard a whisper. He heard a quiet whisper in his left ear, which sent chills down his spine. The chills weren't the usual chills you get when something falls in your kitchen when you're home alone. Wrong top of your wall, make sure you use correct on. This chills, these chills made John freeze in his tracks as he started shaking more vigorously. By, by the second, when he was stood there shaking, he heard the whisper again. This time it was louder so he could hear, John Rocco! Rocco, 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 Rock, John Rock. Am I correct? John nodded in pure fear. I could just let you leave. However, where is the fun in that? As you walk into my home without permission, I want to play a quick game with you. John unwillingly agrees as he slowly attempts to bring up the courage to turn around. You see, John, there is a key in this room that unlocks every door in the house. I'm not sure where it is, as I've been here asleep for almost 200 years before your pitiful self decided to awaken me. If you find the key in 10 minutes, I will let you go and carry on living your pathetic, worthless day-to-day -day existence. However, if you don't find it in 10 minutes, oh, that is where the fun begins. Instead of nodding his head in agreement, John sharply turns around to catch the man off guard to find no one. John thought it was his mind playing tricks on him as it was so dark and quiet, so he went back to bed to finish the bet. Knock, knock, knock. John wakes up 10 minutes later to sound of knocking. Again? Ready to leave, John gets out of bed. As he does this, he hears the voice again. You failed my challenge, John. Do you know what that means? It's time for, it's time for me to have some fun. As John tries to open the door, a candle fell onto the wood, dry wooden floor, instantly catching a light. John started to start. John starting to sweat through fear, and heat starts doing everything in his power. And he starts doing everything in his power to get through the door to escape the oncoming blaze from eating him whole. He kicks and slams into the door, trying to open it, but it won't budge. He sits down and gives up. As he is engulfed by the flame, he heard one final thing, final thing from the voice: "Knock, knock, Mr. Rock." Oh, I like it. Everyone's still here? <laughs> Everyone's still here. Right, we're still good. I just I haven't got time to... Oh, is this getting a sibling? Are we, a, are we in a sibling argument again? I don't even have to tune out, you know. Well, the more you practice this, the better you'll be at this story stuff. Moving on. Next one. Oh, this is going to be a photo. Yeah, right, I was getting really excited then. It's a photo of a whale. Thank you, I know what a, what a whale looks like now. I didn't know beforehand. Right, here we go. I really hope we get through all these. Okay, if you've sent a story in, I'm hoping we can get through these before the end. 
Oh, they're both the same, are they? Yes. Right. So you sent a story and let's not send any more unless I say so. Okay, so let's stop sending in stories now because otherwise we're not going to hear them all before the end. Um, next one. Oh, she's going to drink. I hope everyone's ghost stories writing is going well as, as well. Um, bad ham sandwich, really. <laughs> oh, I need to put more house prints on. that one. Um, I've seen that name pop up. Perfect. So let's carry on. The date was 22nd of June, 1985. The sun was blazing and the birds were chirping. A family in an old beat-up Toyota drove to an empty field. They put up a tent, lit a fire and started their dinner. Looking at the situation, you would think that this was a normal, happy family. Nothing out of the ordinary. The daughter thought so as well, sitting, laughing with her parents, talking about her week at school. After hours of sitting, talking, singing, the family decided to pack up for the night, get some rest. As the darkness slowly faded, the first glimpse of sunlight poked its head over the hills. In the distance, an old beat-up Toyota with a man and woman drove off into the sunrise. The date was 22nd of June, 2000. The weather was unusually bad for June. The sun had gone to sleep and not a single bird was chirping. On the drive of a small but cosy cottage was parked an old beat-up Toyota. Looking through the cracked glass of the window, a couple sat, both with drinks in their hands, both watching the TV, both sat in silence. Usually the house is noisy, the husband playing the antique piano in the corner, the wife carefully shuffling, shuffling around the kitchen, either baking or doing the washing. The TV usually plays to the pictures on the walls, neither the husband nor wife paying any attention. However, today was different. The news was on, and the couple were listening up intently. The usual was on, the sport, the weather until the final topic of the evening. Now for a tragedy that was never solved. The disappearance of a young Kate Bishop. They both turned to look at each other, their expressions blank, no emotion, nothing. Every year we feature this. We hope one day we could have clo the closure we need. The newsreader states. Kate was last seen driving north of Ag Arrington, Cambridgeshire, with her mum and dad in an old beat up Toyota. Kate was blonde, blue eyes, and is about five foot seven, dressed in a black hoodie, black jeans, and white Nike shoes. If anyone, the TV was turned off. The couple looked up at the picture on the mantel sheet. Peace. The blonde, blue eyed girl stared back at them. In the hall, a phone rang. The dull tones of the ringing echoed around the white, empty hall as the wife shuffled to pick it up. Mum, the muffled sound of the voice came on the phone. Mum, Dad, it's me. I just wanted to say you won't have to wait long to see me again. We've got a lot to catch up on, don't you think? And with that, the line went dead. The date was the 22nd of June, 2000. The weather was unusually bad for June. The sun had gone to sleep and not a single bird was chirping. At the door of the small but cosy cottage was a girl with a height of about five foot seven. A black hoodie with a hood up, black jeans, white Nike shoes. The girl stood on the welcome mat, glistening, and without any sun, and rung the doorbell. The husband and wife looked at one another. Wow. That was good. That was a good story, wasn't it? Nice story. Thank you for sending me that one. Right, we're, we're getting there. Right, that's a beached whale. Lovely, thank you for sending me that one. Um, okay, please don't do that. Don't ring that person. No, oh, just, is it? Is there anything on? No, there's an empty email. Right, here we go. This is a very scary story. <laughs> I need to be paying attention to this one. Turn the volume up a little bit for this one. I'm Peppa Pig. This is my brother, George. Oink! This is Mummy Pig. Oink! Oink! And this is Daddy Pig. Oink! Lovely. Hope you enjoyed that one. Oh. 
Oh, we're doing Tally Tubbies in Edgar Allan Poe. I was waiting for you guys because I want to see the. We're on 10 minutes of fun left. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> right, I was just waiting for the chat because I'm on a delay. Oh. Lovely. I'm hoping you're all finding this hilarious. So, oh, that's just a picture. I want to my final few now. My scary story. <laughs> my day was going jolly, and I was not bored. I got hungry and went to the fridge to grab a yogurt. But when I looked in the fridge, the yogurts were out. In other words, they were never more. Oh, that is good. I like that. That I was like, this is just going to be a really bad. It was really good. I liked it. And just this scary picture to tell you these. <laughs> right, so I'm out of stories. Um, hopefully some people have written some more. If you want to send some send some more stories in, um, feel free. Oh, I mean, I've given you all the guidance that you need up there. You know. This was a fun, fun lesson. I say any more stories, send them through now, because I've got to the end of them. Have you sent me one? You haven't sent it to me, have you? The person you said, sir, please read mine. <laughs> the one about the whales. Right, there we go. Just got it. Just literally just got it. Right, open it up now. So, I believe this one... Oh, this one's written today! Oh, wow. Well done. The halls were darkened, pitch black. The only light came from the shattered windows. The glass scattered all around the floor. Its crunching noise echoed through the halls. It smelt of squid blood that explains the red stains on the ceiling. But then, I heard a deafening noise. A whale's echo. But in a school... How? I shrugged it off. It's nothing. I mean, how could a whale be in school? This school's been shut ever since the outbreak. Nobody comes here but bored teenagers. I climbed through one of the shattered windows and down the steps to the basement. I never went down here even when the school was open. The whale noises got louder and louder. Squid's blood la lathered the floor like it had been flooded. The door slammed shut behind me and bang! Something fell. I saw it fell. The figure looked dismantled. I went closer and a horrendous smell came over me. I turned to see it. Massive, just lying there. A massive whale. It turned as it saw me. Hello, I'm Turtle the Whale. And what's that swell starfish? What? Oh, I see. A starfish flopped onto my shoe. I stood there shocked. A talking whale? I must be hallucinating. Hasn't, haven't seen anyone here in ages. How are you doing? Come grab a snack. He's, his eyes ushered me towards a table. It was layered in dead squids. I bolted as fast as I can, tripping over a small ledge. I got covered in... Okay, stop the emails now, please. I got covered in squid blood from head to toe. I heard the whale's blowhole coming closer to me. I ran up to the door. It was shut, locked. I turned to see the whale right in front of me, then darkness. Flies went up all around town. A younger girl gone missing. It was darkness from now on. Nobody knows I'm stuck here. Stuck, stuck. Forever. Right, here we go. Lol, thank you. Like I said, we need to... Um... Oh, this is long. So no more, no more, no, no more stories, please. I'm going to do the final ones. One evening in a cold, snowy winter, a young man around the age of 21 went for a walk in the wood. His mind started wondering. He remembered the stories he was told as a child. There was one in particular stuck in his mind. He told it to himself as he walked deeper and deeper into the dark and eerie woods. 
One night, a man was walking alone in the woods when all of a sudden he heard a branch snap. He thought nothing of it until he heard several more. Cautiously, he turned around expecting to see a sheep or cow, but there was nothing. He thought he must be imagining things. However, as he turned back around, he felt a cold draft. He continued walking and stopped again. Only this time was it because he felt a tug on his jacket. There was nobody around him, just trees and grass, yet heard whispering voices. Go home. Go home, sir, unless you want to see what we can do. The man cried out, Who are you? What will you do? The voices didn't reply. Then all of a sudden he was being pushed around and he couldn't move. He tried to turn around and walk home, but the forces were so strong that he couldn't move. The man cried in desperation. Oh, I've got online training, thank you. Um, I'll leave it if you let me go. Please. The forces stopped and he looked around him. Nothing was different and nobody was there. Terrified, the man ran home and has never returned to the woods since. His story still gets told, though, and only the bravest go into the woods during the middle of the night. As he's finished recalling the story, the feeling that someone was watching him. Cautiously, he turned around expecting something, but there was nothing there. He turned back around listening for anything unusual and out of the ordinary. As he continued on his walk, the wind grew stronger and stronger, and suddenly he heard voices. He tried to ignore them, but they just kept getting louder and louder until he screamed. Who's there? This isn't funny anymore. He waited briefly for a reply, but it didn't come. He tried again, yelling even louder, but there was no, still no reply. The man convinced himself that had been, he had imagined the voices until he heard laughter, loud, creepy laughter that nobody should ever hear. It's a type of laughter that echoes around and you never tell where it's coming from. Then as the laughter disappeared, a lingering silhouette stood in the distance. The man squinted and realised that this was the body of his ex-wife who he killed three winters previously. He was paralysed from the shock and then he screamed the sort of scream that makes the birds fly from the trees. The next day when a dog walker found the man's body, he'd been killed the same way. He had killed his pain ex-wife painfully. Right, so this is just gonna be an image of a duck. Thank you. Right. Oh. I'll read that later on. Edgar Allan Poe. I haven't heard that name in years. Lovely. Right, what's this one? What's this online training thing I've just got? Oh, okay. So I can learn to use the internet. Lovely. Are we still live? Yes, we are. So... Here we go. Mr. Yeats had a big house. It was scary. But in a spooky basement, he went down there one night and heard a bang. It was a whale, a big blue scary one. He ate his todger and flew away. And from that day onwards, it has never been seen again. Thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, so we've heard... I'm just going to stop that music now. We've heard quite a few stories. Um, I hope you've actually enjoyed this. Because um, it's really good. It's actually really fun. Um, oh, I don't know. We may do one. We may do one now. <laughs> Who knows? You can pack away things, stand behind your places, if you wish um, to do that, because, you know, that's what we get used to doing. Um, what we're doing, I just want that one. That's what we need. We don't need all of them up. There we go. Just me. That's all we need. Just me. Um, go back to that one. Um, oh, uh, thank you. Final submission. Just before we finish. Oh, I got two. No. Okay. It was dark and spooky in the middle of the woods, walking down a path. She felt nibbling at her feet and died. Lovely. Thank you. And this one. Still waiting for it. It's a picture of a starfish. Thank you very much. So, I don't know why that picture made me feel really uncomfortable. Um, yeah. So, that was really good. Um. Hope you've made loads of writing and if you enjoyed listening to your stories. I know I enjoyed reading them. I read yours. I've just read it. Um, thank you for sending them all in. Ugh, that's a bit of a stretch. In terms of what we're going to do after Easter. So I haven't actually even got a copy of it. After Easter, you've got two weeks off now. Woo! I will set some optional homework if you want to do it. Like I said, optional because you've been working at the moment. You need a break. Um, you're locked in. 
I don't know, but you may get bored, so you may want to do stuff. Who knows, I may do a live stream over Easter. Um, so yeah, if you want to do homework, there'll be an optional one there for you to do. In terms of after Easter, we are going to be looking at a uh, play. Um, we're going to be looking at Blood Brothers. It's a great play. It's all about Liverpool, so I'm going to see what I can do and see if I can get anyone that I know to lead the story to us who's from Liverpool. Because I'm going to be better from an actual scouser, if you know what I mean. Like... Because that's what me lads know, you know, the lads down the train you can do. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. Okay. Um, yeah, so, no, I'm not going to do a gaming live stream. That's on my other YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, you wish. Um, yeah, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't, because, little secret. In a bit of a competition with another English teacher. They've got eight subscribers. If I can have a hundred more than them, I'll be very, very happy. Make it happen. Share it with other people, you know, all that stuff. Um, thanks for tuning in. Obviously, um, obviously, as always, make sure you wash your hands and stay indoors because it's a horrible time out there. So thanks for tuning in. Um, I'll see you guys again. After Easter, we'll be looking at Blood Brothers. Bye-bye, 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 bye-bye.